south pose. We're just getting started on an X lap today on a little four-year-old Chihuahua Pomeranian cross that has a history of having had a CT scan. On the CT scan, they found a biliary mucosal and an incidental finding of a portosystemic shunt extrahepatic. And so we, can I get cautery plugged in, please? Um, so we are exploring the abdomen right now. We'll remove the gallbladder and we will um, put either a band or a emeroid constrictor on the portosystemic shunt. If you haven't already, haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Make sure you turn on notifications so you'll get a ding on your phone the next time we live stream. Now, we are hypotensive right now. Can you pull the penis off to the side? Um, and so if we start running into trouble, I am going to stop the live stream just so that we can all concentrate on getting the patient through the anesthetic. So just so you are aware. So I'm just going down to the linear right now and I'm pop through the linear with my cautery over the falciform fat. Uh, and I've gone off to the side a little bit up there. That was not intentional, but not a problem either. Just have to make sure I haven't gone through the diaphragm. And you guys can speak as loud as you want. There's no problem. Just talking to our nurses. We're being very quiet, but they don't have to be. I've gone through the diaphragm here. Just so you're aware, we're through the diaphragm, so I'll just have to put in a little chest tube when we come out. So if we look up here, we can see that I've gone to the side of the um, xiphoid and I've gone up into the chest cavity here. So right there. So that's all the way up in the chest cavity. So no big deal. We'll just have to... Um, put in a little chest tube through the hole in the diaphragm when we're ready to close. We are on a ventilator, so. The balfour is in here. And our spoon up here. We have our superstar surgical intern on with us. Okay, so that's gallbladder there and there's a lot of adhesion to it. It's sitting right there and I'll just go through and Try to find our, so that's colon there. This is duodenum all the way down here. That's probably the portosystemic shunt right there. Um, so that's portal vein there, hepatic artery, vena cava. Pancreas right there, so the, the shunt is right there. I can see it through the mesentery right in there. So I think probably because the dog is clinical for its gallbladder disease, I'm going to go ahead and get that out first. So you have to kind of prioritize when you're doing surgery. I've been looking at some other hospitals to potentially do surgery at and and I'm just reminded how fortunate I am to work here at South Pause. 
um, just with the level of care that we have here. Hold on to that, please. And then just grab onto that little bit of... Yeah. Something that I tend to take for granted. And then when I go other places, I see that it really is second to none, the quality of care that our team provides here to our patients. And we go through great efforts here to get to where we are, but I, for, you know, I forget where we used to be. So lots of adhesions of momentum. Can I get quarterly turned up, please, to about 30? Yeah, that's all good. So I'm using Ligasure to break down the our mental adhesions. Emily, are you happy up front? So we've got it on a dopamine CRI to try to get our blood pressure up. So that stomach there. And so we've just had Sarah Austin join us and we've got some adhesions and we're also waking up a little bit. So we're battling hypotension and making sure the anesthetic is at high enough level. Keep the patient asleep. So it's always a Always a battle. In this case, it's more of a battle than usual. So we've got really pronounced adhesion even between the stomach. Yeah, that's weird. And the gallbladder. It's had a previous rupture. Don't. I mean, it had some ascites before. You'd think of it, did it? Have like a bile, at least a focal bile peritonitis. Yeah. And I don't know that I'm going to be able to do much better with the camera than I have now. And I apologize if my head is in the way, but the patient comes first. Stomach retracted a little bit. Do you want your little 
electric camo hook. Electric cautery hook? Yeah, even that. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. <laughs> One step too fast, <laughs> electric camo. <laughs> Jump. <laughs> Um, can you ask Ray, please, for my electric cautery hook? Grab that right angle, please. Make sure it doesn't fall off the table. I don't want it just evolves the. I think there's a comment about the pneumothorax. So there is a pneumothorax right now, and I'm not worried about it because we're on a ventilator. And it actually is going to exteriorize the liver a little bit. Sometimes I create a pneumothorax intentionally, and so I'm not going to resolve that until I have the gallbladder out. If I didn't have the patient on a ventilator, then I'd be very concerned about the pneumothorax and we would have fixed that straight away. So odd. No. Oh, it's a female, so it might have been spayed, but that would be it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm down to the neck of the gallbladder and I'm going to get a right angle around that. Just trying to evaluate the neck of the gallbladder here. Um, can you grab onto the gallbladder gently there? That's great, thanks. So I've got my little hook, electric artery. Here, which is just great for dissecting the neck of the gallbladder. It's so satisfying. Just peeling bits <laughs> away. Okay, so nearly down to the neck here. So that's the paddock duct from another lobe. Probably from another mother. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's the 
bile duct right there. And we have check, checked um, blood work this morning, and we know that um, the dog is not jaundiced, so the bilirubin is normal. So I'm coming around the neck of the gallbladder here. Hold on to that, please. And open. Yeah. And open and close. Hold on to the gallbladder for me again. So I'm just putting a ligature around the neck of the gallbladder here. Push that down a little bit. Just make sure that I haven't lost, I haven't torn through the wall. Just got the neck again, just to make sure I haven't lost it. And I'll cut that ligature. ligature. Get another right angle. Do I have another right angle handy? Okay, and then I'm going to come on top of that. And then we'll get some suction ready. I'm cutting the neck of the gallbladder here. The ligature around the neck of the gallbladder. Hold on to that, please. Can we get some saline, please? And just be really careful not to elevate that right angle so I don't avulse mm -hmm. the neck of the gallbladder, the cystic duct. Okay, release that please, that um, right angle, good, and try to lift that out, yeah, and then keep a hold of that gallbladder. Alright, so I've got the neck of the gallbladder doubly ligated. Carefully start lifting the gallbladder out. Let's see what it's still attached to here. Okay, hold on to that. Uh, I don't know, maybe I'll put a Put a ligature around the neck there. Might not be able to get around that. Yeah, all right, so we'll just pull that back here. Just have a look at that liver lobe. that is fairly peripherally attached, and so I'm just going to ligature through that liver lobe. Could that be a liver biopsy? Yeah. Alright, so 
so we have that out. We don't have any hemorrhage from the liver. Let's get that lifted up, please. And we've done coags, and that's all good. All right, so I think we're in pretty good shape there. Can we get some warm saline, please? Uh, there's a question um, about whether it's common to have adhesions. You can certainly have adhesions with a diseased gallbladder, particularly with the chronicity in this case. Um, this is a four-year-old Chihuahua Pomeranian cross. Um, who? This is the cold stuff. Yeah, leave a bit of it in there. Is it not hot at all? Okay. Uh, who presented to the emergency center with um, lethargy, vomiting, I would imagine. Um, it was seen by emergency a couple of weeks ago, and um, they did a CT scan at the time and found uh, a biliary mucosal and a portostemic shunt, but it was fairly unstable at the time, and so we've just been stabilizing it for the past week. And there's a question about, is there a benefit about doing a cholecystocentesis prior to resection? Not if we know we're going to take it out, and, the, and there's no real justification to keep the gallbladder in unless we're concerned about trying to reroute the biliary tree by doing a cholecystodiagnostomy. Um, but in this case, because the gallbladder is so diseased, we know we're going to have to take it out. There's no benefit in doing a... Um, uh, uh, cholecystocentesis. Can you slide down and let me just see if I've got any more? Okay, keep going. Yeah. Great. Um, so we are definitely going to put in a, um, a chest tube before we're finished. Uh, keep going. So the most common complication with this surgery would probably be hemorrhage from the liver bed. All right, so now I'm going to go through the greater omentum. There's our shunt sitting right there. So let's suction that out. Go with the yank hour. So that's our shunt sitting right there. Tear the momentum a little bit and see if I can get a better view from this side. Now the best view is actually from here. Can I get some 4 PDS please? So I'm just going to put a little stay switch on the stomach to retract that out of the way. It's sitting right on top of my shunt. Uh, this dog does not have any neurological deficits at all. So I'm just putting a stay suture on the stomach. And I'll probably need a right angle. Oh, I've got one over there. Hemostat would be better there if we've got one. Pulse ox down. Uh, okay, great. So that's the shunt sitting right there. I might get a right angle on the momentum. 
momentum here and just get Sarah to pull that up and out of the way. Put another stay suture on the stomach. That's our shunt right there. You see the blood flowing through it. Let's get a lap sponge down here. If you tear this shunt, um, you're in big trouble. Let's go into the vena cava there. When I was a resident in about 1990. Three, so almost 30 years ago, I tore a shunt and we tried to repair it, but with the, by the time we had repaired it, the dog had died of portal hypertension. concern is that I'll push the right angle through the wall of the shunt. So that's in a cable right there. And there's the shunt going right into the side of the vena cava. Fairly dicey surgery and dissection. So I'm just kind of tearing through the mesentery. Okay, so I've gotten around the shunt there. Uh, hold on to that, please. Can I get a uh, five mil amyloid constrictor, please? Let me just see what that looks like. Let's just try to allow some blood flow through so we don't create mm -hmm. portal hypertension acutely. Uh, seven and a half, let me see what that looks like. That's three and a half, can I get a seven and a half? Just have a look at that. I'm trying to decide whether I'm gonna use an amyloid constrictor or a cellophane band and six and a half is very large and very heavy is the problem so there's always a risk that we're going to create like ac acutely occlude it I think I'll go with cellophane please can I get a cellophane band please Sam can I get a cellophane band please and I'll get uh, hemoclips Thank you. So 
So this is actual cellophane um, from a lolly shop. And you have to make sure that you use proper cellophane and not plastic because only cellophane creates that response that causes occlusion of the shunt. Um, if you use plastic, um, and I have, so I have purchased cellophane before where I was told that it was cellophane and then when we put it on, it never occluded. So I had to go back in with proper cellophane and redo it. So this is the cellophane here. And the way you can tell the difference between um, uh, cellophane and plastic is that when you burn cellophane, it burns like paper. Um, whereas when you burn plastic, it drips like plastic. So I'm just folding the cellophane now. And do I have that right angle that I had before? Uh, underneath the vessel at the moment. Okay, do I have another right angle? Yeah, this one here. Yeah. Can I get a... Hammer that, please. So I folded this a few times. And then I'm going to cut the cellophane at an angle like that so that I can grab on. The risk is that as we pull it around, we will tear through the vessel. So that's not good. So you can let go of that. Mm -hmm. right, so now I'm going to try to feed it around the vessel. Got the cellophane band around the vessel, and now I'll get some hema clips. I don't want to occlude it too much. Literature says that you should all you go alternate with your arrangement of your hemoclips. And I'm being careful not to completely occlude the vessel. like a herringbone pattern. All right. So now we'll take this out here. We'll check to make sure we don't have evidence of portal hypertension. So release our stay sutures. And so we'll look for like a hypermotile bowel, a congested bowel, a dusky looking pancreas. So the bowel wall looks pretty good. Can I get some more warm saline, please? All right, so I'm happy with that result. How are we doing? 
Okay. Uh, I can start with your um, um, So there's a question about whether I would use, set when I would use cellophane band versus a ring. And this dog is just so small and that shunt is so flimsy that I'm worried about using a ring and weighing down the shunt, which would cause acute occlusion and portal hypertension. Is that too warm? Yeah, we're just getting a smidge in there. Can we go ahead and flush? Go ahead and pour it right in there. Fill her up. So I'm using this to see how much bleeding we're having as well. And we can see that that saline is staying pretty clear, which means that even though we've got some oozing of blood from the liver, it's not significant. Want the rest in? Yep. Okay. All right, so now we'll address our diaphragm. Can I please get a, maybe an eight French red rubber catheter? Okay, so we'll take this out now. I'm looking through the diaphragm here into the thoracic cavity. Ah, yes, please. Actually, stop. Let's get a, a Mila chest tube, like the little ones. Yeah. That'd be great, thanks. I'm gonna go ahead and put in a Mila chest tube because that's going to have more fenestrations, more likely to be able to empty it. And also, I will be able to leave that in. Are you going to put in a double in No. Can I get some 3O PDS, please? Thank you. Closing the abdomen. Just in the interest of getting the dog off the table. Can I get another three O, please? Incorporated some fat. Did we get that extra three OPDS? Anna? The bigger one.
and be able to show you guys how to put these in as well. So what we do first is we put a needle through the chest wall like this and I can see where it's going in so I know that it's not going to penetrate a lung. Then I'm going to push that the rest of the way in and take out my stylad. And then I'll take my guide wire and I'll feed that in. So that's going into the chest now. We'll feed that in a little bit further and then we'll feed our catheter over the guide wire. Dilator, sorry. And we'll push that through the chest wall like that. Okay, and then we'll pull that back out. Let me just make sure I went in far enough with that. Yep. Okay, so I've dilated and then I'll feed my chest tube over the top of that. going in the chest as well and we'll just make sure that we're just getting past the fenestrations. fenestrations. Alright, so now we'll pull the guide wire out and we should be in good shape. And I'll just leave that for right now. Alright, so then we'll get some more suture and we'll close the hole in the diaphragm. time this would be catastrophic is if you didn't know you did it. And you're just suturing to the abdominal wall. Yeah. Go ahead and evacuate the chest while we're looking at the diaphragm, just to make sure that it's actually empty. And a three-way stopcock, please. Okay, so the hole in the diaphragm is fixed. So we're leaving this open and you want to make sure that you leave this open while you're closing the chest so that you're not creating a tension in the thorax. You want to evacuate? 
Right, so we'll watch the diaphragm as we do that. So we can see that it's floppy right now. So we're evacuating as we speak. So that's no longer floppy. That's got some tension to it. Yeah. Hmm. Good. All right, so we'll leave that in until the end of the surgery. And then we'll pull it before we get to ICU. Because we, we know that there's no lung trauma or anything like that. So this is totally iatrogenic, which means that there's no reason to keep the chest tube in overnight. Yep, you could do that, or you could pass a urinary catheter through the hole in the diaphragm as well, and then just evacuate it that way. So if you didn't have a ventilator, your nurse would have to breathe for the dog six to ten times a minute until you got the diaphragm closed. And so again, if I didn't have a ventilator and I created that hole, I might be more likely to try to fix it straight away, put in a chest tube and fix it straight away rather than waiting till the end of the surgery like we did. The reason why I waited to the end of the surgery is because Making a fenestration in the diaphragm is actually a good way to get the liver to drop caudally, um, making it easier to assess and, uh, um, and manipulate the liver. Okay, so that's, that's completely negative. So I'm happy to go ahead and pull that out. And that's just a tiny little hole, so we don't even need to worry about putting a suture on that. All right, so I'm going to leave Sarah to close the rest of the sub -Q. So there's a question about what if, you, what if you placed a ring or a constrictor on a normal patient. So if you put a ring or a constrictor on the portal vein in a normal patient, what's going to happen is you're going to acute or, or progressively get portal hypertension, which is going to have to be resolved by um, creating... Uh, acquired portosystemic shunts or the patient will die. Um, so you'd cause severe acute portal hypertension and the dog would have to find some way to manage that and if it doesn't, it's going to, um, it's going to die, you know, it's not going to survive. 
Uh, we are not leaving the chest tube in. We've pulled it out. The origin in the shunt was the splenic vein, as somebody suggested, so it's a splenic cable. Uh, the question about, is there a stepwise approach to find the shunt intraoperatively? And that's a really good question. The way that I usually do it is there should not be any, um, any vessels going into the vena cava cranial to the right renal vein, um, except for the phrenic abdominal vein, which is tiny. So if you see anything that's entering the vena cava between the hepatic veins and the right renal vein, that is likely to be the shunt. And so often what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll look in that region, um, see if anything's coming in, and then also we will make a hole in the greater leaf of the omentum to look down close to the epiploic foramen, um, which is the other place that you can find shunts, shunts commonly. I'm just looking to see if there are any other questions. So again, the most common complication we see with this surgery, so with um, cholecystectomy would be hemorrhage from the, the liver bed. Um, And I guess uh, bile leakage would be the next one. Um, this is a Chihuahua Pomeranian cross. Hi from Toronto. All right. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and end the live stream. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel. Note that we have ended the YouTube membership. All of our content now is free, ongoing. Um, we felt like the benefit that we, and the impact that we provide by uh, giving free content to everybody supersedes the, my, we were only getting a couple of thousand dollars a month for the YouTube membership. And so it just wasn't worth the loss of, of impact that we were getting as in, uh, you know, getting as much content as we can out to as many people as we can. So we've ended the YouTube membership. Everything's free in YouTube going forward. So anyway, thanks a lot. And I hope to live stream some.